and in this episode of Curb Check, we're driving a 2010 Audi A3 S Line. This is a 2.0 turbo with the DSG transmission. Okay, so what is an Audi A3? This is the smallest Audi available, even till today. The A3 is the base model uh, in terms of size. It is based on a Golf GTI, which is a good thing, which means it's not. It doesn't have the conventional quattro system that most Audis have that are very nose heavy and very uh, understeery. Now this still does understeer the limit, but so does the GTI. What do you get in the A3 that you don't get in a GTI? Well, for starters, you get a lower roof line, which for some is a problem. Um, for others, it's not. For most, it's not an issue. Now, being German, the seats are adjustable enough that I can still get comfortable in here. Um, speaking of seats, these are the sport seats you get in the S-Line trim. And they are great. They're very comfortable for long trips, and they're very supportive. And you don't wallow around like you would in a base Jetta seat. Another advantage over the GTI is that the interior quality is just better. Um, everything you touch and feel feels great. There's soft touch everywhere. Um, there's minimal, minimal creaks and rattles. You've got Alcantara on the door inserts and the seat inserts. These are partial leather, partial Alcantara. You do get the Audi console stereo, which is, I think, better than the Volkswagen and comparable stereos. Um, one thing you do get that I don't like is a standard dual zone climate control, but it has these weird toggles instead of knobs. And it just, it isn't intuitive. You've got to click one degree at a time and you can't just spin one like you would a radio knob or like any other auto climate control system. You can just spin it to the right degree you want. So it, it's just kind of clunky. It's not very good. Um, but you know, it's 10 years old, so we'll give it some, some leeway. Now this car is a decade older than the current A3. It is based on the Mark VI chassis. We see a ton of cars on the Mark VI chassis. Um, there is a little bit of chassis flex compared to Mark VII. If you drive them back to back, you'll feel the difference. But it really is still a great platform for a hot hatch. And that's what this really is. It's made for a twisty back road. It works in the city, um, but it's not a drag racer. You know, We're in Texas where we film here, and this car is often underappreciated, like most hot hatches. They don't really, they're not as prominent here as they are in Europe or bigger cities. But if you live in a city, this thing, this thing does a lot. You can get five people in here. I'm not, I would say cross country comfortable, but you can do it. The seats do fold down. Um, it is overland approved, which is good news. It is quite comfortable once you're in here. Even for taller people, you can get comfortable despite the roof line. Now, if I had the choice between a GTI and an A3 for me to purchase, I would probably get the GTI just because of the headroom is a little bit better. You've heard me say a lot in other reviews about how gauges can be Audi good. Well, this is what I'm referring to as this car right here. Everything on the cluster is precise. If you get into a, an American product from 2010, um, the needle is three times as thick as this one. And so there's variance in what you're seeing. There's no, there's no variance here, everything's precise. When it says 47 miles an hour, it's 47 miles an hour, not 48 or 46. It's to the T. So what does this compete with? Well, in America, it competes with a 2010, kind of a GTI, and that's about it. Um, you had the Focus SVT prior to 2010 when this car was new, but it wasn't turbocharged like this is. It wasn't as refined as this is either. Nowadays, you have the Golf, the Golf R, the Focus ST, the Fiesta ST, and the Focus RS. Those are kind of the main hitters in the US. Um, I think that if you want to be taken more seriously, maybe at your job and the appearances are needed, and you still want a high hatch, this is a great option for you. It doesn't look silly. It doesn't have mud flaps on it like it's a rally car. It doesn't have goofy decals or crazy wings. It's, it's very subdued styling-wise. Um, you basically can take the corporate Audi grill and throw it on here, and it looks just like any other Audi. But when you go to the back road, you can put the DSG in sport, and you can manually control gears. It is a six-speed. This is the first generation of DSG transmission. So I wouldn't say it's as fast as the current DSG, but it's pretty good. Uh, let's try that out real quick. Every time you hit the button, it immediately drops down. For second gear, third, fourth. And so just there's no hesitation on the shift. If you try this in a automatic transmission that has paddles, it's just not the same thing. Nowhere near. Now, what the DSG does is it allows someone like myself who wants a third pedal at all times to share a car with someone like my wife who doesn't care for a third pedal at all times. And if you live in a traffic scenario and you don't want to deal with the stop and go, this really does solve it. Um, people have complained about DSGs being 
being uh, jumpy in traffic. This one's not. There's there's nothing like that here. It just works. You put it in drive, and it just works. Anyone can drive this. The two liter turbo is really the swan song of this vehicle. It is rated for 200 and 200 horsepower and 207 foot pounds of torque, but it's been measured at 221 and 223. So in typical German fashion, there's a little bit of conservative numbers there. So from the factory, this thing's really making 220 horsepower. Now, does it feel fast? Not really, because it's so refined. A car that made 200 horsepower when I was a kid would have felt like a rocket ship. And it just, it just really doesn't. This doesn't feel like it's not making the power, it just doesn't feel raw and unhinged. Some highlights of this car is that it is German. It's, if you don't get that, go drive a German car that's well set up, you'll understand with it right away. Get in a Ford Focus from 2010, or even a new Ford Focus and get in this, and you'll know the difference immediately. Now around town, it feels like a rocket ship because it is geared so low. The one-two punch is great. It does have launch control. What you do is you stop and you put it in sport, which we're gonna do right here. You put your left foot on the brake. Make sure traction control is off. And then you can bring the revs where you want. I try to hold it around three and let it go. Second gear, chirp. Third gear, on its own. You do hear the turbo in the background. It's not loud, but you hear a little bit of whistle at RPM, and it is awesome. Your pass is right back. Alright, so something that's cool about this because it is German, the gas pedal has that last indent at the bottom. So whether you're in a sport or drive, whichever mode you're in, you push it to the floor and it feels like full throttle and it doesn't change the shift patterns of the transmission. You push it that a little bit more, you feel that click and it goes into attack mode and gives you the highest or lowest gear you can at the time for the most pull. It's great, it's a lot of fun. So why should you consider this car? Because it's not a crossover. You don't have to have crossovers. I know that's a big thing. It's the number one selling class of car right now, besides the pickup trucks, um, which are awesome. But moral of the story is, don't feel like you have to get one. If you still want it to be fun, you still want it to be livable and get good mileage, they have something for that. It's called the car. Should you get the DSG transmission? Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends. It depends on what you're using it for. Do you deal with an hour of stop and go traffic? Maybe you want to consider the DSG. Do you prefer a back road and, and that's more important to you? You definitely want the manual. While the DSG is good, it is not the replacement for the manual, and it's just not going to be. It's not good enough. It's not a Porsche PDK, it's not there yet. This is a small part. It's tossable, it's fun, it's incredibly easy to park, it's very agreeable, and it feels nice. Everything you touch feels exquisite, and that's how I describe this car all the time. It's just exquisite. Now, my biggest drawback to this car is the stupid sunroof. It doesn't actually close. It has this draw shade that does help, but it's perforated. And I think it's a styling aspect. It's called the open sky concept. The problem is, when you pull this thing closed, you're never fully closing the sun out. And in our part of the country, the sun really shows up to play. That's a problem. It gets really hot in here. What's my favorite part of this car? Uh, definitely the turbo. And definitely the turn in. Unlike some Ford turbos that we're used to, this turbo does pull a lot harder, it doesn't fall off. In typical German fashion, the panel gap is just on point at all times. Um, which is really refreshing going from American stuff to German cars. There's never a panel gap issue anywhere. It's consistent everywhere. Now being a Audi product from the 2010 decade, it's interesting that there's a two-size cup holder. One that's for traditional cups or mugs or tumblers, that kind of stuff. And one that's a little bit smaller behind it. It's conveniently just the right size for a Red Bull. It makes you wonder about the demographics of this car.